too far over mm -hmm. on one side. Okay, we begin. All right. Good evening, everybody. You've got a call to order. The Committee on Infrastructure, March 27, 2019, and uh, we'll call it to order at 7 p.m. in the automatic chamber. Will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, Alderman Tom Lopez is not here. Uh, Alderman Jan Schmidt is. Alderman Jetty is here. here. Uh, Alderman Ken Gidge is out. And our chair, Michael O'Brien. Is present. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this evening we have a public hearing on the uh, reef submittal of a petition for street acceptance on a portion of Pine and Central Streets. Uh, for the committee in looking at it, I took the liberty to uh, bring it up on the board. Basically what we're changing with it, it seems to be the, the little bit of the corner there to uh, help the flow of the traffic. And what we're talking about, the corner, if you can follow the, the cursor here, <clears throat> we're going to be looking at basically right here. I think it's going to be taking a little bit of the chip of that right out. Uh, <clears throat> this was proposed by the mayor, and it has the uh, uh, city engineer, Mr. Dukren, has signed off on it. So, therefore, uh, I will start the meeting on with the testimony on the public hearing. I'll now call anybody that is in attendance this evening on the uh, street acceptance of a portion of Pine and Central Street. Uh, if you want to speak in favor, please step to the microphone. Again, I'll call anybody with testimony in favor. Seeing none. I will now call for testimony in opposition. Anybody here that has testimony in opposition of a portion of, uh, on the street acceptance of Pine and Central Street? Again, I make the call. Seeing none, we'll start again to testimony in favor. Anybody in the audience that would like to come before the board for a petition of street acceptance of a portion of Pine and Central Street? Testimony in favor. Step to the microphone. Seeing none, I'll call again. Testimony in opposition for the resubmittal of a petition of street acceptance, portion of Pine Street and Central Street. Seeing none, therefore, we'll now close the hearing of uh, the uh, resubmittal of a petition of street acceptance on a portion of Pine and Central Streets, and I'll close the meeting at 7.03. Now, I think we could still say live and we'll get into the regular meeting of the Committee on Infrastructure. So, good evening, everybody. We're going to call to order the Committee of Infrastructure. Uh, this is Wednesday, March 27, 2019, at 7.04 in the automatic chamber. Will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, Alderman Michael O'Brien. Present. Alderman Tom Lopez. Alderman Jan Schmidt is here. Alderman Jetty. Here. And Alderman Ken Gidge is not here. Okay. Public comment. Uh, we do have people here, and when I call your name, please step to the microphone. Uh, please state your name and address, and uh, you may at that time, oh, and let the record show that we have joined by Alderman Lopez at uh, 7.04. Good evening, Alderman Lopez. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'll call Sandy Belknap. Hi, my name is Sandy Belknap. I live at 40 Fairmount Street here in Nashua. If you don't mind, I'm just going to read from this so I cover all my points. Um, I'd like to encourage the City of Nashua to approve the Ordinance 019039 for the always stop sign at Charles and Fairmount Street. Just to start, as the leader of the Neighborhood Watch Group for the Fairmount Street and Little Florida neighborhoods, I contacted over 50 of our watch participants by email on February 27th of this year to share information about this ordinance and tonight's meeting. The message provided a full month to plan to attend the discussion. My 10-year trend with working with my neighbors to be more civically engaged shows that when they're not against something, they don't show up. So a lot of people I talked to said that they're fine with however this goes tonight. Um, the need for an always stop sign at this intersection is, is important because of three specific reasons. 
The first one is that there used to be a stop sign at this corner where drivers would take a right, <clears throat> excuse me, onto Charles Street or left onto Fairmount from the, if you're coming from the upper end of Fairmount. It was there for many years and was removed just prior to the construction of the new Fairmount Street Bridge as part of the Broad Street Parkway construction four years ago. It was moved across, this, the sign was moved across the street to become a new stop when coming from down Fairmount from Amherst Street. While this sign has been there for several years now, I'd estimate that eight out of 10 cars failed to stop, almost always causing a traffic issue. Because of this, I myself, typically coming from the um, higher numbers of Fairmount Street toward downtown, I always stop at this intersection, even though there's not a stop sign. Um, tied to this, over the past two years, the city mapped out overnight spaces on Charles Street that are just around the corner um, from the direction I would normally take. And these aren't seen of traveling too fast from the upper end of Fairmount Street onto Charles and then onto Franklin. This is an older neighborhood, and there are trees that block the line of sight, as well as a high, uneven curb, curb around that corner if you take a sharp right. The always stop sign should at least slow the traffic in the area, creating a safer intersection, as well as safety for pedestrians, homes, and the cars parked just off the intersection and local, uh, local driveways. The second, um, Reason to approve this is that the traffic, the traffic continues to increase in our neighborhood due to cut-throughs to avoid Amherst Street and Main Street. Often, um, these are often driven by Google Direction and Waze. While current residents are familiar with this intersection, it's often used by customers at the Triangle Credit Union, as well as the new residents at Cotton Mill and the new apartments on Franklin Street. All these people are not as familiar with the traffic flow and lines of sight issues since it's an oddly configured three-way intersection. Additionally, several new homes were built on Intervale Street, which is further up on Fairmount Street over the past two years. This has also increased traffic for an already dense older neighborhood. All of these changes have brought quite a big, bit of incremental traffic to the intersection in the middle of what used to be a low traffic neighborhood, especially during commute times. The always stop will hopefully make it safer for cars as well as pedestrians in that area by forcing the traffic to slow down. Finally, when I asked the previous administration about the sign removal prior to the Broadway, uh, Broad Street Parkway construction, um, I was asking about this because the stop sign was nailed to a tree and I wanted it off the tree and put onto a post. Um, but I was told they were not to worry, they were getting rid of the sign because there was a plan at the time for an entryway to the parkway from Franklin Street. So they wanted to have a smooth flow of traffic and removing that stop sign at the time was the rationale. That seems to be a non-issue now since it, there seems to be no plans at this point to add that um, access to the parkway. So um, that, those are my three reasons and I thank you for giving me the time to provide this input tonight. Thank you for your comment. <clears throat> the chair now welcomes uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis Rides. Dennis Ryder. 17 Charles Street, Nashua. I live almost on the corner, not quite, but I've been there 25 years, and you gradually tackled this problem by putting in stop signs. You have two of them on a three-sided street, and it just isn't working. Over the 25 years that I've been there, there's been all sorts of accidents. There's two people going to speak after me, live on the corner, and they've had physical damage from those accidents. Uh, I think it's a simple stop sign is going to save a life. There's no doubt about it. It's the next thing that's going to happen. So I strongly urge that you put in that stop sign. It's As it stands right now, if you can look at the road, it's a very easy bend coming down Fairmont towards the downtown area. And the cars come around there like they're on racetrack. They're really going fast. So I really do recommend you put in that stop sign. Thank you. Thank you. And the chair welcomes Peter Daughter. If I said it correctly. <laughs> Hi, my name's Peter Doden. Doden. I live on... 19 Charles Street in Nashua. I've been there since 2010. Uh, it's a beautiful neighborhood. I have a good neighbors, uh, Mr. Ryder included. Um, since we've been on this property, we've noticed 
numerous car accidents over the years. I can't tell you how many car accidents there are, and I don't know if they've been reported to the police, but during certain times of the year, especially the winter months, there's numerous accidents or very, a lot of close calls, but a lot of accidents. It got to be a point where I was gonna, I was telling my wife that I was going to put out a, uh, a bin and stay, put, you, put uh, damaged car parts here just as a warning for people because I was constantly cleaning up par uh, car parts off the corner. But that's not why we're here, uh, obviously. I'm, I'm here because of some, uh, we got, a, there was an accident or two accidents in the last three years that caused damage to cars sitting in my yard. The last one was in January. That was very, it was severe. It rode off a car in our yard, my son's car. It broke the, um, it broke the frame. In fact, when people looked at that, looked at the car and we took it like down to the collision center, they asked, is everybody okay? Well, they're okay, there's nobody within it. Thank God. But if there was somebody in it, and it, sometimes that happens when my son come, came home late from work to decompress, there would have been a problem. Uh, as well, two year, three years prior to that, again, we had another car in the yard. And they, again, hit my car, my son's car, a different car, and pushed it into another car in the yard. That seems to be a regular occurrence, and that's not right. Um, a stop sign, I don't know if we'll stop it. It'll slow them down. Um, we see a lot of rolling stops going through there. You can't stop that, right? There are a lot of kids getting off of buses there at times, and without that, they're let off on Fairmont Street, uh, right by Paxton Terrace, and if their cars aren't slowing down or if there's no stop sign there, there could be potential for a kid getting hit. Um, if that's, I guess, that's all I have to say, so <laughs> thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> that's all that I have on the list. Is there anybody here that did not have the opportunity to uh, sign up that would like to address the board? Sir, could you please come forward, state your name and address, and your uh, position for the board? My name is Scott Rosenthal. I live at 24 Fairmount Street. So if you took that arrow and just went to the right just a little bit, or left, yeah, directionally. You would hit the three streets, well, the two streets come together. If you come down Amherst Street, you don't stop, you hit my house. Okay. Um, we have not had property damage. Um, I know the previous owner actually did have property damage where the post at the end of the front walk, somebody ran into him. Um, three way stop is, again, Rolling stops, you're not going to stop, but a rolling. And I would not say three-way stop. I would put a sign that said always stop. There are big trees. If you're coming up Charles Street and going to continue on to Fairmount Street up towards Sandy's house, you cannot see cars coming from the other direction until they're just beyond that big tree. Um, there is a utility pole, I would call it a telephone pole, but um, where the stop sign would make perfect sense, right in front of our house. On the other side of the tree is our driveway, and there's another utility pole where you could put the three-way, or I'm sorry, all-way stop sign ahead. But we've all, I walk the dogs. I've seen the car parts piled up on both corners. That big tree gets hit at least once a year. Again, stop sign's not going to stop it, but it will help slow it down. And the always stop, instead of the three-way, the always, that's what my wife told me to say. <laughs> uh, would at least make people s slow down. Thank you. Thank you. Again, anybody else that has any <clears throat> information to bring forward to the board? Seeing none, uh, we'll close the public comment. 
to the clerk, communications. From Tim Cummings, Director of Economic <clears throat> Development, re communication providing additional details as requested on Ordinance 19-036. Thank you. Seeing that uh, there being no objection, I will accept the communications and place it on file. Petitions. Resubmittal of petition for street acceptance, portion of Pine and Central Streets. Um, Mr. Chair, I move to recommend that the Board of Aldermen grant the petition for street acceptance for a portion of Pine and Central Streets. Okay, we have a motion before us to uh, grant a petition for a street acceptance at a portion of Pine and Central Street. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Oh, aye. discussion. Would you like discussion, Alderman? Uh, yeah, just uh, didn't we do this before? Uh, it's yes, because it says resubmittal. So I don't know why it got resubmitted back. There may have been additional work with the uh, city engineer on it. I, uh, you know, That's don't right know. Right. But uh, this is a re you are correct. This is a resubmittal. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering what the what change, if any, there is. Uh, uh again, um, what it basically is looking at the engineering draft. I took it down <coughs> off the board to get to the Fairmount Street, but it's just taken a portion of the current. Uh, the turn there, uh, so is make it easier to get access to the uh, seems the intent is easier access to the Broad Street Parkway, the beginning of the Broad Street Parkway, that section of Pine Street that's going to lead into the Parkway. Okay. Very good. Any other discussion? And I'm sorry, I should have said, uh, Mr. Cummings is here. <laughs> Maybe he could. Uh, uh, Mr. Cummings, would you be an objection to come forward? Is this your perusal with the uh, uh, <coughs> street acceptance for the portion of Pine and Central Streets? Uh, yes, okay. Okay, uh, well, there was a question by Alderman Jetty, why the resubmittal, and I could go back to it if you wish. No, could no, you? that's fine. If the question is just very simple as, uh, for the record, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development for the City, uh, the petition that's before you this evening uh, has uh, uh, you're being re-asked for a public hearing on um, the disposition of 40 Pine, and that is due to a, um, or I should say, uh, uh, relocation of the right-of-way, which is the public hearing that you have this evening. The reason why it's back before you is because we wanted to be doubly sure we met notice requirements. Um, we... We, me, I did not have confidence that we executed appropriately r relative to the, the standard procedures that we have for notification. So we wanted to make sure we did that um, to make sure that this was as clean and, and, and transparent as possible for, of, a, of a process. So um, nothing controversial. It's just uh, it was an administrative issue that we wanted to make sure that we were um, dotting all our I's, crossing all our T's. Okay. Very good. And if I may take the liberty to uh, Alderman Lopez, uh, you missed the first, which was a public hearing for the testimony in favor and opposition. And just to brief you, nobody came forward with any testimony at all, whether in favor or opposition. So per the Belknap theory, that means that everybody likes us. <laughs> just <about> <laughs> So, uh, Director Cummings. So, uh, so what, what this, uh, since I'm here, I might just uh, give you a little context and background. What this is is a piece of property that was originally taken for the uh, Broad Street Parkway. It has been deemed as unnecessary and surplus now as we're starting to close out that project. Uh, the land that is there is a good uh, lot where you could build a, a, a home on. We put an RFP out. Uh, NeighborWorks has, has um, answered that RFP with uh, an affordable housing project that they would like to do a duplex owner occupied um, type type of dwelling. Uh, we indicated very early on that we thought that there was some city infrastructure too deep into the land and that we knew that we were going to need to, to re-engineer uh, the um, the lines to make sure that the city's infrastructure was explicitly in the public right of way to give it a clear title to, to be transferred. So that's that's essentially the genesis behind the, the legislative petition that's uh, before you this evening. Very good. Any additional questions to Director Cummings? Director Cummings, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> yeah, stepping up to the plate. Thank, thank you, no sir. Problem.
Okay. Uh, there is a motion before us to recommend the Board of Aldermen grant a petition for street acceptance for a portion of Pine and Central Streets. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Motion carries. To the clerk, unfinished business. There is none. To the clerk, new business resolutions. We have resolution 19-124. Naming the intersection of Grand Avenue and North 7th Street, Little League Square. Thank you. And if I may speak, uh, I'm the only uh, sponsor, but there was additional sponsors uh, last night, and welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we have a unique thing. I come to find out Little League Baseball is approaching their 75th anniversary and uh, did receive from some coaches and staff members that they want to take that little corner right behind home plate from um, Positive Way, uh, <clears throat> Grand Avenue, and North 7th Street, and they just want to make that Little League Square in recognition of their uh, 75th anniversary. So I encourage all the kids, whether you play baseball, lacrosse, or anything, it's good to recognize, the, uh, in my opinion, the youth sports of the city. So I'm very happy to sponsor that. And the addition, uh, discussion on the motion, Alderman Lopez. Yeah, that wasn't communicated to me, so I was kind of curious about what was going on. Um, I wanted to particularly make sure that it wouldn't affect the addressing of Positive Way. No, I mean, Positive Way begins <clears throat> at that particular intersection. Mm -hmm. This was brought up, and uh, and we, we did our, our due diligence and homework with this. We didn't, there's uh, competitive leagues, such as uh, Little League and Carl Ripken, and we did speak to Park Rec and everything, and uh, they cleared away that, uh, you know, not be in favor to one particular group, and keep and recognize the hard work that we did with Positive Way with the Boys and Girls Club. So this should not, I mean, it's not renaming a street as so much as designating the corner as a square. Right, and I might look like I've been here forever, but I've only been here for three years, so I wasn't sure that naming a square didn't have an impact on the addresses. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in that area pretty ex Mm -hmm. extensively last year to, to deal with traffic issues. I don't think the neighbors would have any kind of issue with that. I think they'd probably yeah. encourage it as long as the traffic is flowing safely. And again, per the Belknap theory, no one's been complaining, so it seems like we have resolved most of the issues they've had there. Mm -hmm. No, it's, this should not affect the, the good work that you did and everybody on the, the positive way. So it's just a square. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. <clears throat> now, we uh, the clerk, new business ordinances. We have ordinance 19-039, authorizing stop signs at the intersection of Fairmont and Charles Street. Um, I move for final passage. Okay. I would like to say that I did receive a phone call from uh, uh, Alderman Patricia Clay. She is quite under the weather, been for a couple of days. I wish her a speedy recovery. And, uh, you know, she briefed me on this. So, uh, and we did hear testimony from the good people here. So I'll open up any questions by members of the board on the pending motion. Alderman Lopez. I'm in favor of it. Um, I know this is on the border of Ward 4 and Ward 3, um, and I learned from recent other streets that I should probably let that in, that alder lady take the lead. Um, so I am fully in favor of it. I think it will have a positive impact on the traffic flowing into Ward 4. I think the neighbors have been pretty clear that this is necessary. The only, the only concern I have is the tree. Um, I assume this will be normal stop signs and not like nailed to objects in the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. And uh, that, I think, is going to be at the determination of uh, public works when they do that, and hopefully that they have respect of our trees. You know I, mean? I just, and, I thought they had to be a certain height from the ground, and so I would imagine if you stuck it to a tree that's growing, like, a mm -hmm. couple years, you have to move it? Like, I assume that was a one-off deal, and there's no reason for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would... Um, Suggest too, and maybe that'd be worth a good follow up too, just to make sure that. Uh, but I have never seen in the city a, a stop no. sign on a tree, and no. I think they're quite brilliant to that and the needs and everything because uh, could hurt the uh, the tree and everything. So I hope it'd be independently. Well, even installed. after a couple of years, the stop sign's too high and you have to look up. So I mean, mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and the other discussion on it, I uh, and I thank the uh, 
people who worked with uh, Alderman Clee, who brought this petition forward, Alderman Lopez and Alderman uh, Linda Harriet Gathright, uh, for the equal co-sponsors. Uh, this is the way it works, and we listened to your testimony, and hopefully this would uh, solve your problem. It sounds like you have a part of an auto parts store there from all the damage, and uh, we would like to try to eliminate that and increase the safety of both our neighbors and the traveling public, and particularly the kids that live in that particular neighborhood. So we take this quite serious. So that no other further comment, I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Okay. Uh, we have also two tabled in committee, 019036. Uh, Alderman Lopez and myself have worked with uh, Director Cummings on this, and uh, there is uh, a move afoot. It's a little bit bigger than uh, looking at the whole problem, so it's going to remain on the table, if that's okay. And uh, it's uh, Alderman Jetty, I should recognize you were there, too, with some discussion on that, correct? Uh, no, I was at the last meeting, the but last I did meeting. not attend the uh, Yeah, the this, this is, and you're about. welcome. I mean, this is looking, and, and it's staying, uh, instead of saying with Bower Street, right. looking globally into the neighborhood, because it does involve uh, the residents, and it does involve, like, the uh, hospital, per se, and so it, the, the issue is a little bit bigger. Alderman Lopez. It, it is fair to say, Alderman Jetty, that both Alderman O'Brien, while we have been communicating with the city about this and with the so Hampshire Medical Center, both of us were unable to attend the meeting, so you didn't actually miss a meeting. But the, it turns out that when the city departments met, um, DPW, parking, and um, Southern Hampshire Medical, there was no immediate easy solution. It's a, very, it's a much more complicated problem because the surrounding streets are all also a nightmare. Um, I know when I was talking to Director Cummings about it, I was coming from the parking lot where it was take that we've been talking about um and i was walking onto marshall street which is even narrower and also a two-way street so i think we just need a plan for that area to the points that were made in the previous uh meeting you know to include the streets that were also named um and make sure we we don't just change one element of a complicated system without thinking about the whole thing i'll say Sounds like you're, uh, we're working in the right direction. It, it, appears, it depends oh, on what gonna, they say. I mean. It's going to take a little bit of time. This is going to be a little <laughs> bit of a project, you know what I mean? But, you know, if you're going to do something, and I'm sure everybody's in agreement, do it right, you know. and Make sure all the roads don't lead in the same direction with no exit. Right, and, take, you know, take it like all that. stakeholders <laughs> into account. And, and we seem to be doing that, so I'm quite pleased, actually. So it shall be... Uh, O nineteen thirty six shall remain on the table. Uh, to the clerk, general discussion. Any well, I mean, to uh, anybody here, uh, general discussion. Alderman Lopez. I would really like to discuss the oval. Um, I know it's partly um, planning and economic development uh, committee's per, uh, purview, but I also think that it's an infrastructure issue, like the way the roads are going, the safety of it. We sort of started the plan. Um, where the courthouse is, and we locked off that corner of it, but we didn't finish the other half. So, I mean, frankly, it makes no sense. The public is like, is that supposed to be a park? Or, like, it's a temporary deal, and now, like, the paint's peeling, there's cracks in the pavement. We should either fix that or finish what we were doing and, and make it a, a piece. So I would, I would love to have um, Director Cummings come and give a more thorough presentation on what we should do to finish that, what the benefits of it are, um, all that, and because it is also an economic development, I wanted to propose we do a joint meeting and just have everybody here at once instead of separate meetings. Mm -hmm. I do know it's listed as number 25, and I have it up on the, the screen here, but that is, uh, from what I understand, that is private property now, so I don't know if anything's going to change, but the, particularly in the center of the Oval, uh, the courthouse is no longer, I, I'm assuming, I may no, be No, no, you're incorrect. correct. The oval itself is privately owned. <clears throat> the right. complication is the oval as a property is really difficult to work with. Yeah. The owner's been maintaining it. Um, I'm sure he'd love to sell it, but it's a it's an oval. It's like surrounded by a, a circle. Mm -hmm. So the original intention and in, in previous infrastructure meetings that we talked about um, behind cutting that top part off, that little teeny tiny park mm -hmm. that used to be a city park. It was still zoned as a city park. 
Um, so by removing part of the oval, we were starting to convert that circular. I mean, I, I considered it a traffic like uh, menace because people walking on foot would be crossing and traffic wouldn't see them as they came around the oval. Um, traffic was going the wrong way around the oval because for some reason it wasn't following the typical rules of a traffic circle. Um, so the idea was to decommission that in phases as an oval and return it to the original square shape. You can see the way the roads shaped. It used to be a city block. And at some point somebody said, nope, we want a circle. So they cut that out and they left two little wedges. There, That's also a complicated issue. You can't just take the second wedge and say, okay, well, we're done with this. It's a square again because the directions that the streets go in consider it to be an oval. So it's a complicated issue. It might even be linked to the one-way street reversal, but we should figure out what we're doing, either either move forward with it or, or something. Mm -hmm. I, I know that there is a plan. Uh, there is a plan to make um, West Pearl two ways. Um, I know that they had talked about making a lot of changes in this area, but where is West Pearl? Right here, West Pearl. Mm -hmm. So that you'd come in here, and this would act like a real circle so that you could go off on there, off on there, and here. But you're right. I think we should... Oh. What I think that what's holding us back is the cost at this point. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know whether this is absolutely imperative that we have the entire one-way street reversal figured out or whether we just haven't bothered to look at that second segment. Um, I mean, I know that one that West Hollis was considered as a two-way as part of the street rearrangements, mm -hmm. so they didn't crisscross way further over to the um, to the east. So we haven't finished that project. It's sort of like in limbo, and, and cost is definitely an issue, but that particular piece right there, we still have that chunk, that triangular chunk sitting there in limbo, both the one that we, we turned into a park and the one that we didn't turn into a park. So it, it makes things very confused, like who's clearing that, who's not you clearing mean, it. Th this part here where there's picnic tables, right? Is that y Yeah, so it's kind of like one of them is a park and mm -hmm. the other one isn't. So, I mean... We're clearing one for the snow removal, but we're not clearing the other. We don't need to clear the other. The rules are very convoluted in that area, and I think we should be looking at it. Any plan that we do that's going to cost money, we should look at that oval anyway, and we can. there's nothing holding us back from looking at it right now. Alderman Lopez, have you brought this concern to Director Cummings? Yes, and I've also talked to DPW. Okay. I mean, all we have to do is invite them. They, both, so, they all know. DPW did uh, repaving and restriping over there, and to their credit, they did their best to integrate it into the uh, a bike master plan. They added bike lanes, parking spaces. Um, they did as much as they could within the ordinances that they were given, mm -hmm. but I think it would be a good idea to, as, a, as aldermen to look at the progress of that and see what's going on with it. Yeah. Um, all right, I'll, I'm going to reach out to Director Cummings and express your concerns and see where we're going to go next, and Maybe we can get him to give us an update. Uh, and you said you want economic development and on the update, or well, I would get I would the, say receive the update prior first and then invite. I think it would be a good idea for Director Cummings and DP, <coughs> somebody from DPW or City Planning to be there as well, so that we get a, a full. Because we don't want to talk to one department, find out what their plans are, and find out another department has concerns about it. So I think that would be helpful. But I think that the the concept of making that an actual useful property is a function of economic development because right now it's an oval. If he can sell an oval, that's great. But one of the driving factors is to make that developable. And I think in order to do that, you have to square the edges off. Right. And uh, <clears throat> very guided with what I'm going to say, but looking at where we are strategically looking at <clears throat> and not uh, commenting on any previous meeting. But this may be another one where the <coughs> issue itself is the additional, you know, neighborhood itself needs to be <coughs> globally looked at as well, too, if you remember previous, you know, meetings. So, uh, yeah, I'll approach Director Cummings and see if we can, and I'll get to you come back to you and uh, maybe we could work together and come with that and come up and see at least to have a briefing uh, with the people here and see what we're going to be that area looking really at. Matter. I mean, it is 
a little bit, you know, I, I can appreciate your concerns, most definitely. It's in the downtown area. We have a clock tower right uh, adjacent to it. It's, uh, it is a focal point to which people come into our fair city and we'll see and everything else Street like Parkway. that. So You're coming in Broad Street Parkway. And there are pedestrians Correct. If, if we in can the summertime, teenagers love that. It would probably there. behoove us, yeah. Teenagers love, I don't know why, but they like the parking lot in front more than they like the park in the back, so you'll see them playing around on bikes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's technically private property. The owner hasn't, like, made an issue out of it, but if we don't figure out what we're doing with it, something could happen at some point, which mm -hmm. we're not going to want to see, you know. Alderman Jetty. Yeah, if I could also add, uh, coincidentally, um, somebody that uh, works in the downtown area was just talking to me this evening um, before I uh, came over here about uh, about that whole area and mm -hmm. how um, you know, they have uh, concerns about, uh, and I've experienced this myself, trying to, trying to leave... Uh, High Street going uh, west on High Street, and uh, yes, this can be a hard to get hard drive out over to uh, <coughs> the left turn lane on uh, Chestnut in order to go around the oval to head out uh, Central Street to the either the Broad Street Parkway or Ledge Street. Uh, that gets really difficult at certain times of the night, and I, I know I've I've expressed a concern to the uh, at some meeting at which the um, uh, a representative from the Department of Public Works was present, who did the striping or was uh, uh, the striping? I guess was planned or ordered, you know, prior to my becoming an alderman, and uh, but it but they striped it last year, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, and it, it uh, and the, the lanes are, are narrower than they used to be, and there's parking now around the oval, and there's parking on the uh, uh, east side of, uh, here. of uh, here. Walnut Street. Mm -hmm. Parking here. Um, and uh, so I, I was I was told that 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 was intentional to to reduce the speed in that area, you know, by making the lanes narrower and, um, you know, which I, um, I, I can appreciate, but the, um, someone else pointed out to me that the parking is, um, you know, there are no meters. So evidently the parking is free there. I don't know if that was intentional. Telling the public these things. Um, yeah, I keep revealing these <laughs> dirty little secrets as you, uh, you can park them. at the vacant um, courthouse oval for free, <laughs> so, <laughs> but only on the outside. You can't go in the actual lot. <laughs> right. God. Yeah, this is on the street. and uh, <laughs> So I don't know if, uh, if that was intentional. And uh, if, you know, tonight there was a, uh, a, a tractor trailer that was parked along the west side of, um, of Walnut Street there, right where your arrow is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so you know, it, it uh, the you know the size of it was uh, I mean it was in within the uh, well just over the parking designated parking area, but when you're coming out of High Street, it makes it difficult and maybe that's by design. Maybe they want it to be difficult to to slow things down. But I I, I agree with Alderman Lopez that that uh, we ought to be looking at this and and um, you know determining whether or not uh, the way it's being used now is is the right thing to do or whether there's a better way and and so I I, I, I applaud the suggestion that we right. have that type of a meeting to look at this yeah the uh, tractor trailer truck I do know on that particular corner the uh, on uh, West Pearl Street to 143 <laughs> to 129. Within that block right there, uh, that is uh, natural wallpaper and paint. And uh, they do have additional warehousing on the other side Here, at number 53 to 55. And I can see where they do receive, you know, deliveries via a tractor-trailer truck. 
and although it may be inconvenient, but it's one of those, you know, only temporary as they offload and load, you know what I mean, whatever that they do. But when it's there, I'm sure it is most uh, uh, inconvenient, but uh, it's one of the costs of doing business in, within the downtown area, you know. And But I agree. I mean, it needs to be addressed, and I see this as a, another big chunk we're going to chew here that's going to, you know, not a very easily yeah. fixed, but it's going to have to be definitely studied, you know what I mean, to come up with a plan. So I don't see this being solved soon, you know what no, I mean? No, it's very complicated. It's going to be so, expensive, but it really uh, should be looked at. You're right. So I'm going to take the flavor of the board and, like I say, talk to Director Cummings and uh, and to see, and uh, we'll have him aware of the minutes of this particular meeting, Good. and we'll see if we can get him on the docket. Um, and I'm sure you agree, I don't see this as uh, a project that is shovel ready for this summer, you know what I mean? You know, it may not be, but uh, we'll see if we can, you know, get them expedited on it, at least anyways, to come up before the board with some discussion on it. I think even just having a discussion might make sure that it gets attention, you know, if a grant comes or some kind of thing along those lines. Right. Um, and then in addition to this, I also wanted to suggest we look at uh, on-street overnight parking in more areas because the... By and large, my neighborhoods, uh, where it's feasible, it's used and appreciated. Um, there are a couple people that either really push the capacity or um, some places that there is no immediate solution for. But I've heard a number of other aldermen suggest for other wards or other regions that maybe they wanted to approach um, on-street overnight parking in a different way. And I would like to have that conversation so that we're sure that it's it's appropriate for the areas that we're we're considering it in if people are going to look for uh, you know on street parking either to be free or if they're going to look for parking to be expanded we should be having that conversation and figuring out it figuring it out in a planned way otherwise someone's going to make a resolution and we're just going to go back and forth over it right. we're going to offend neighbors where it's good in one part of the city but not in another so i don't know that we have to actually do all that work right here but i like an update on the city's intentions in that area well. Yeah, and what you bring up with the parking, and since this is general discussion, <clears throat> coming from a city that was larger, you know, my hometown there in the Boston area, people purchase <clears throat> houses, and a phenomenon that we haven't even gotten into in this city yet, it's called uh, taking a regular two-and-a-half-story house and turning it into a condo, you know what I mean? I haven't really seen that yet, but it's <clears throat> particular happening down in the uh, in the <clears throat> metro Boston area. Parking is going to need to be addressed, I mean, and it's going to come down to the, the question, is the landlord supposed to provide it or the municipality? Because if you look at the, the structure itself, if it's a two-and-a-half-story house that was meant to be, in the old days, built, you know, with the horse and buggy era, or and or when people didn't really need a car, <clears throat> and they had that small little driveway. Now, today, they increase the profitability, have mm -hmm. turned this into a multi-unit, you know, add additional apartments, and then it comes down to <clears throat> there's no parking, and is it the municipality's concern? So it's it's a bigger, that's another one we're going to have to bite off and chew to really come down to really look I at agree. To, I to, agree. To, be, to be fair with it. I mean, I would like to grant parking and say, uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. But the thing, I'm very cautious with that, and particularly overnight parking, to do it in a piecemeal fashion, because once it is granted, you will never get it back, you know what I mean, in my opinion. Yeah. And I w would much rather a slow, not, not to say negative about it, but a methodical mm -hmm. approach to look at each individual street and to come up with it and to uh, make it. You know, I, I would like to keep the availability <laughs> in... Uh, the downtown vibrant and have an landlords able to rent out their particular structures, but also keep in mind, you know, the linear feet in front of some of these houses may not coincide with, you know, six apartments and six cars. <laughs> you know what I mean? From and, some uh, of the complaints that I've gotten, and, and that's concerns. an issue. You know what I mean? That's yep. that's got to need to be looked at. Unfortunately, you know, fortunately, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alderman Lopez. Some of the concerns echo what you're saying because I've I've seen developers literally develop a site and fully aware that there was no parking and choose not to do that parking 
and then approach the city after and say, well, we have people living here. We need parking. And I've seen <coughs> develop, like property owners change the nature of their individual uh, addresses so they could add more revenue. They could make smaller apartment units. They could charge more people separated rents and they could make more revenue. And again, expect the city to do that. And they typically present that as the city needs to figure this out. The difference is where the landlords have the flexibility in many cases to decide who's staying there and to screen and, and be very clear at the lease signing, we don't have immediate street parking or we only have one lot or you know something to that effect. The city can't just manifest extra parking space. We don't even have the tax revenue to, to start building garages everywhere, even if we felt like building upwards. And that's typically what I get suggested uh, from landlords is, well, why don't you take some of those lots you have and build a parking garage? And that's the cost of that is exorbitant. And so we'll hear from taxpayers if we try to start building a bunch of um, new parking garages when I think there is a responsibility on the part of the landlords to control the current as they as they bring in people. And I think that starts with just being transparent and forthcoming on the part of landlords. When you sign a lease, you should inform your tenants. We only have these many parking spaces. Parking is an issue. We all want the tenant who's got all the money and the, the great income and everything. But if you're landlocked and you don't have a parking space, maybe you should consider a tenant who doesn't have a car and is willing to take the bus. Um, I think those there is shared responsibility for us doing what we can within a space. But it, I mean, within reason, we can't, I've literally had people suggest that we claim eminent domain over their neighbor's commercial parking lot because they want to be able to park their residence there. And I'm like, that's not what the city's supposed to do. Well, we're, uh, we're discussing that in some form. I don't want to say it's uh, on the front burner, but you know, it, it it, it is on the horizon, and as the city grows, and the downtown particularly grows, you know, as we're working and what I think is a worthwhile endeavor, uh, we got to, you know, keep the weather eye on our residents, our landlords, and our business community, and make sure there's enough parking. So <coughs> we'll bring that one up, too. <laughs> I mean, given the pace of development, right now it's a downtown problem, and primarily in Ward 4. But Ward yeah. 3 is, I mean, before Alderman Klee, Alderman Schonerman was basically adding a street every week because that's what the residents were looking for. And with Crown Hill already being pretty dense and having older streets, when we start doing the development in the rail yard, if we don't have a plan, it's going to get, it's going to be a big right. issue. So I, I just think we need a plan. I really hate to look at my poor mother, God bless her soul, but uh, used to shovel out the front of our house put out some piece of lawn furniture, Maggie's drawers on a pole, <laughs> you know what I mean, and stand on top of the snowbank and claim the parking space for my father, you know what I mean, and five boys in the family, and we were all gearheads, but we delayed in getting our cars because you couldn't park anywhere, you know. Would have been my, nice if her sons would right, have my, the show. Yeah, I mean, maybe, they, maybe some of the sons should I, I, I wasn't a fun date back then, I oh, mean... Okay. Uh, Take the bus. Take the bus to Cleveland Circle <laughs> for the movies, and you know, ah, maybe get a pizza afterwards. Uh, I was, my uh, life was controlled by the MBTA routes <laughs> and everything, but it was fun nonetheless. But you know, I see the same problems down there now morphing as Nashville becomes more popular, and we should be popular, you know. But as we get into that, these so are things, and I plan. think uh, it'd be wise to keep the weather eye on that and to. To look at that. We, you know we really I mean? should look at a parking plan for the future. Just yeah. like all the other parts of the city need planning, so does parking. You're right. Yeah. Well, let's put that one on the plate, too. <laughs> Anything else in general discussion? Uh, uh, none? Okay. Uh, public comment? Seeing nothing, our good friends have evidently happy and have left, and that's <laughs> fantastic. On that theory, that means they're satisfied because they're, they're, they're satisfied. So that's you know, you know well, Take it's good. <laughs> it, it, it's good to see that. If I may just address that, you know, they people come up with an issue, and it's always nice when we actually able to make the public happy. So <laughs> you know, makes me feel good. Remarks by the alderman. We'll start. Uh, alderman Jetty. Nothing. Thank Nothing. You. Alderman Lopez. The awareness is healing walk. It is starting from the city hall, and it's going 
up. Well, it's going randomly north and then around a big loop. And then it'll be ending at City Hall. So I encourage everybody to join if you're interested. Um, you can support people who've lost people to the opioid crisis. You can support people who have recovered from it. You can support people who are struggling it. Um, and I think it's important for us all to represent that. It's they've. This has been a labor of love from Darlene Pena um, and Meg Doucette. They've done a tremendous job. There's been a tremendous outpouring. Um, it's a very positive experience, and there's a lot of very positive energy from people who've been down at the bottom and climbed their way back up. So I encourage everybody to come. Okay. Clerk, have any comment? I'm all set, thank you. I heard a rumor that there was a group that worked for a furniture group down in the South End hit on <laughs> Powerball. <laughs> So God bless them if, oh, really? if that is true. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to say all those like myself who had played Powerball this evening, best of luck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we shall see. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, possible non-public session. I don't see any need We're for that. Uh, Alderman Lopez, do I have a motion? Yes, I'd like the motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to adjourn is in order. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. okay. The, we'll declare the meeting closed at 7.51. <laughs>